Good morning, guys. It's Monday, August 7, 2017. This is the Daily Mix TV's Morning Edition. So word comes from the street that Apple is releasing an LTE-capable Apple Watch later this year. Now, this would be a real boon for the number one smartwatch on the market, given that the chief complaint is that it requires the iPhone to really work today. So this morning, I'm watching CNBC's Squawk Box, and they had Kevin O'Leary of Shark Tank fame on making commentary. I mean, he was talking about the Apple Watch versus the Samsung Watch. To note, O'Leary does have an iPhone but likes the Samsung watch more and also has one that he uses with the iPhone. He loves the Samsung watch more because of all the faces you can download like Patek Philippe and Rolex, etc. He also appreciates the fact that the Samsung version can use wireless networks to operate and doesn't require a mobile device. His last point and the most important one is that he praised Samsung for their forthright effort to be able to ascribe to consumers' as wants and desires. The Samsung watch works with the iPhone via a downloadable app. He's right. Not that this is a surprise, as the Grim Reaper of the Shark Tank is rarely wrong about these kinds of things. Consumers are looking for customization. They don't have a one-size-fits-all or single-brand-focused mentality anymore. Consumers are looking to buy devices from different manufacturers for different reasons, but be able to integrate them. Now, here's the interesting part about this. It plays into everything that's going on in pop culture right now in terms of the cyclical nature of marketing and consumer behavior. In the 70s and 80s, at the height of the high fidelity market, consumers wanted audio components from different manufacturers based on how good that component was. So in other words, you bought a Marantz amplifier, or a Sony tape deck, maybe a Bose speaker kit, and so on. Then came the all-in-one units of the 80s and 90s, so basically the fast food of sound systems. They were cheaper, and their quality was way worse. Actually, in most cases, they stunk. Now, the same philosophy holds true today, despite over 30 years of innovation. People want what they perceive to be the best piece of personal technology today, as they bought what was perceived to be the best component yesterday. I guess the more things change, the more they stay the same. Now, speaking of staying the same, Dunkin' Brands just can't help but continue to drive a nail in their coffin in New York City. So last week I gave them a shake in my head for a situation where a Brooklyn employee of a Dunkin' Donuts denied two members of the NYPD service, citing, I don't serve cops. So the chain immediately came under fire by several NYPD unions boycotting. Dunkin' Donuts put a response out via their spokeswoman, Michelle King, that was rather cold and vague, uh, and the franchisee reached out to one of the officers to personally respond. Okay, that's Crisis Comms 101 from the 50s. But then they came out with another statement that blamed the store's layout, which, quote, put the crew members and two officers in a difficult situation because it was not clear where to order. Guys, law enforcement is not stupid. The worker clearly stated, I don't serve cops. And all you're trying to do is deflect? Shaking my head at Duncan Brands again. Here's a thought, guys. You need a new PR team that's got some fresh ideas. Yours continue to dig a hole that may not be able to crawl out of. Everything they're doing continues to drive further boycotting by law enforcement. And now the civilian population is starting to boycott. As a matter of fact, over the weekend, I personally deleted all of Duncan Brand's apps, including Baskin Robbins, because I just can't spend money with a company that behaves this way. Now, ironically, while all of this is going on, Duncan is testing a new name, dropping the word donuts from their moniker in California in favor of just Duncan because they want people to know that Duncan focuses on coffee and other items, not just donuts. Okay, for a chain whose food is regularly slammed by critics and consumers alike, you're basically doubling down on poor choices. You have a PR nightmare on your hands. Your chief competitor, Starbucks, is running circles around you in innovation and customer service, and the leaders of your digital team have basically defected to another company. So your solution is blame the police, ignore Starbucks, change the name of the brand. Wow, guys, please get it together. I don't want to see an American iconic brand like Dunkin' Donuts continue to fall. My name is Sean Patrick Hillman. I'm the CEO of Hill Story Marketing. I'm also the editor-in-chief of The Daily Mix TV. We would love to hear from you, so please email us at thedailymixtv at gmail.com. We'll see you this afternoon, guys. Have a great rest of your Monday morning.